to take a moment to recognize that we are all witnessing history today. Madam Speaker, offer my congratulations. Hello, I'm Troy Kirby, and this is Monday's Legislative Review as we start the 2020 session. And the home of the On January 13th, opening ceremonies in the Washington State House confirmed the first new speaker in 20 years, as Representative Lori Jenkins was handed the gavel. With her election as House Speaker, Jenkins represents many firsts for the state of Washington. I, Lori Jenkins. I, Lori Jenkins. Do hereby affirm. Do hereby affirm. That I will uphold the Constitution. That I will uphold the Constitution and laws of the United States of America. And laws of the United States of America. The Constitution and laws. The Constitution and laws. Of the state of Washington. Of the state of Washington. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. Of Speaker of the Washington State House of Representatives. Of Speaker of the Washington State House of Representatives. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations, Lori. Thank you. Before she could begin her speech, Representative John Lovick reminded the audience that they were witnessing a historic moment for the state. I want to take a moment to recognize that we are all witnessing history today. Another barrier falls as the first woman in Washington state will stand on this spot and hold this gavel as Speaker of the House. Madam Speaker, offer my congratulations. Thank you. Jenkins laid out her agenda for the entire 98 representative body, which focused on health care, living expenses, and the struggles of homelessness. Those who can't access health care due to cost or geography, those who are grappling with opioid addiction or another substance use disorder, those who are falling behind in an economy that's not working for everyone. There are emergencies all across the state, and one in every community I visited this year was housing and homelessness. I heard about it from the good member from the 39th in Salton, and, good, and the good member from the 3rd in Spokane. And I, the good member from the 19th actually drove me through a homeless encampment in Aberdeen. I heard it from many, many others of you too. We have to focus our time in this 60-day session working to ensure greater stability for families and communities by getting people inside, out of the cold, with a roof over their heads, and somewhere to build a life. Jenkins also focused on the rising expense of child care. Another issue that touches all of us is the lack of affordable child care. This hurts families and businesses. Last year, the Association of Washington Business reported nearly 50% of Washington's parents found it difficult to find affordable childcare. That not only hurts families, but it's costing our businesses over $2 billion a year. You know, over the holidays, my wife and I had a couple, uh, two couples over who had one-year-old kids. And we had them over for breakfast. And it was really troubling to hear them talk about how difficult it was to find childcare and how expensive it was. Linda, Yasmeen, we're gonna do things to help you, to help Shoshana, to help Rumi, and your families this year. Jenkins laid out the transportation battle budget ahead with Initiative 976 public vote passage and the potential implementation if the Supreme Court upholds the measure. What's important though is that we keep moving forward. And that's not always easy. This session we're gonna be grappling with the effects of Initiative 976 on, trans on our transportation system. I am not gonna sugarcoat it. The impacts of this initiative are devastating to transportation in our state, particularly for seniors, people with disabilities, and people with low incomes many of whom they rely on our buses, our ferries, our trains, and other forms of public transportation. We will fight to protect the most vulnerable in our communities. I am really grateful to my seatmate, the good member from the 27th, 
who's working with the good member from the second, Representative Barkas, to do this. We'll work with our colleagues across the rotunda and the governor to keep Washington moving. It's gonna be hard, but we will do this hard work together. House Republican leader J.T. Wilcox, with 40 representatives in his caucus, then provided his response to the entire House floor. He challenged the 56 Democratic member majority to be active listeners to the Republican minority. This is a place where you talk about conflict. And at its best, it's a place where you help resolve conflict. And Madam Speaker, uh, one of the things that I really appreciate that you recently said is you talk about how your job is to listen. And Madam Speaker, we're the minority. That means that we don't get to win a lot of things. Uh, our number one job is to speak and debate. And we can help you do your job and you can help us do our job when you and all of your colleagues are the best possible listeners. Wilcox also spoke on the issue of housing, which he said became divisive during the 2019 legislative session. Let's, let's try to de-escalate the ideology. Uh, I, I thought that we had some tragedy last year when we did housing. You know, there was a report that came out recently that said there was 255, there was a shortage of 255,000 housing units uh, over the last 15 years. The private sector used to produce housing in abundant quantities. I know my parents uh, built the house that I live in uh, for almost nothing by, in today's terms. And to reproduce that now uh, is out of reach for many people. So let's, let's not just try to provide public housing. Let's try to fix the regulatory and the tax and the cost system so that the private sector can do their part. Wilcox then challenged his fellow lawmakers to end title-only bills, which are bills written on short notice with little information and a lack of public hearings. By really trying hard to make sure that we're not surprising people, that the groups and the public that are affected by any bill really gets a chance to evaluate those things, come down here, do their citizens duty, uh, lobby themselves and help us make the very best possible decisions. And a public hearing on House Bill 2325. The House Appropriations Committee held an afternoon hearing on the Governor Inslee's proposed operating budget, with Office of Financial Management Director David Schumacher stating that the state's robust economy has been driving state coffers. Um, it seems like it's been a while since we had um, as, as few financial difficulties as we, we do right now. We've, we had a a year where the caseloads went up over the interim, but revenues went up roughly by similar amounts. So we are in a roughly similar place that we were when we all left town last year. And it seems to me that that's, uh, that's not been the case in, in recent years. A large percentage of the entire state budget is earmarked towards funding public schools. 64% of the growth has been in public schools. So we're now up to a little over half of the budget is K-12, but as we've decided about how to spend the increase in the budget over the last, the last several biennia, we have spent almost 64% of that on public schools. Now that, as we've worked our way through McCleary, that should not come as a surprise, but this shows kind of graphically what the budget decisions that have been made by the last few legislatures um, to set the groundwork for this, this supplemental. Schumacher then laid out Governor Inslee's homeless strategy, which proposed taking $319 million out of the state's rainy day fund by eliminating half of the homeless population by 2022. What the legislature and the governor have not often done is try to ad address the sheltering problem directly. That's often been more of a, of a city issue. What the what the governor has decided is that, you know, the cities are doing their best, but it's obvious when we look outside that the core problems aren't solving the problem fast enough to bail out the cities and the problem that they have. 
I think the things that we are doing in the base budget are effective. I, I've seen some newspaper articles that suggest that maybe we're turning the corner. I don't want to get out ahead of that. I think we probably have a ways to go. But it seems like a lot of that is, is doing a lot of good. That said, I mean, you can just drive down the freeway or look under a bridge and you see that the, too many Washington residents don't have a real place to be. And what we have done in this budget is proposed $319 million to come out of the budget stabilization account to try to specifically address sheltering. So that's enhancing current shelters, that's building new shelters, partnering with cities, um, making a, a lot of improvements, the goal of which is to reduce unsheltered Washingtonians by 50% within within two years. Thank you for watching today's legislative review covering the 2020 session. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our social media channels.